All right, welcome to Strider Tree Gear. Today we are talking about carabiners. Uh, there's a lot to know, a lot to say. I've got a big selection of different types of carabiner snaps here, and I'm gonna lay out uh, the basics, maybe a little bit extra more than the basics, cover the ANSI rules and, and how it applies to carabiners used within work positioning harnesses, hopefully cover what carabiners qualify and what some that don't and what you can use them for and which ones are ideal for what sort of circumstances and hopefully you guys find this useful. So uh, here we go. So whether you're new to the tree climbing game or you've been in it a long time, there's been some fun recent developments. There's a lot that goes into the design engineering of carabiners. And so I'm gonna start with kind of the most basic simple carabiner. This here is the classic generic. This is made by Camp. Um, it's got this sweet bull nose set up to where, uh, unlike the old school ones where you've got a little hook inside here, this one has this, uh, this bull nose catch so that it still is just as strong, but it doesn't catch on things when you're trying to take ropes off and on. So most good carabiners nowadays have that as a feature. I don't know if I've got any here that uh, have any, yeah, basically everything's, everything is that style these days. So it's great. This as a carabiner within the tree industry is not super useful. It's essentially, even though it is rated, it's essentially an accessory beaner because in the US we have to go by the ANSI 133 standards. Now the ANSI 133 standards dictate that any carabiner used for work positioning or your suspension life support system have to be rated for at least 23 kilonewtons, but 22 and a half, which is about 5,400 pounds. And they must be self double locking and auto self double locking and must and what that means is this standard carabiner requires one motion to open that's it and so it requires one motion to get your rope out as well and that makes it less safe there's there's not the redundancy to prevent a rope from coming unhooked when you don't intend it to so basically all of the ones that we're going to use here that I'm going to use in my job are at least double locking now most companies have gone to a triple locking setup um, and virtually everything I climb with will be triple locking because even with a double locking carabiner, it's still too easy to have that come free. So I've got, um, I think I have an old double lock. Yeah, so this is an old double locker. It's a steel one. I like occasionally climbing with steel carabiners because um, a lot of times if I'm using a double rope system, if I'm advancing my rope ahead of me as I'm uh, accessing a tree, I'd use this a lot with uh, smaller to medium deciduous trees where I won't <clears throat> I won't bother setting the line. I'll just attach a steel carabiner and a throw weight. And I'll just lob it up into the tree, start hip thrusting in. It's nice to have a little extra weight, but this is just a double locker. So it's just a twist and a pull in. Uh, and that is technically legal. It's technically will suffice according to ANSI standards. Virtually all these other ones that I'm going to use are triple locking. So an example of a triple locking carabiner would be like this one by DMM. Uh, this is, I think it's called the Perfecto. It's, I really like this carabiner in particular. It's small, it's compact. I use it frequently for my attachment point between the bridge of my saddle and whatever climb system because it keeps things compact and close. So I have easy access. But this requires one motion to lift the gate, twist it, and then pulls in. So that's three different motions. This one's almost where it's in need of some, some lubrication. So hopefully you can see that. I've got another one here that is, needs some cleaning. One of the things to look out for with your carabiners is that after a while without cleaning, they start to get sticky. So this one, if I close it slowly and I let it go, it doesn't always snap all the way across. You can kind of see that it just barely goes. And so it's not totally locking all the way. And that's that's a, um, something that you have to watch out for. Carabiners need to be maintained regularly. I've already gone through all of my DMMs recently because they had their older style was known for that to be a, a sticky point and a failure point. And these are probably my primary climbing carabiners, but they need that consistent maintenance. Anyway, talking more generally. So we've got these guys, single locking, not particularly useful, great for slings, uh, speed lines, 
a little bit of light rigging here and there. If you want to do a quick redirect, maybe where you're not, if it, if it fails, then you're not going to be falling to your death. Then you could use something like that. The advantage is the fact that it's really light, really simple. There's nothing to it. Next thing, um, the next thing to talk about here is uh, shape. So there's a variety of different carabiner shapes and, and they design them differently for a reason, right? Here is a standard oval carabiner. Uh, DMM, a lot of them are this shape. This is what I tend to use most often. The reason, uh, the reason they use an oval over a shape more like this has to do with the symmetrical loading. So if you, you probably can't see it, but this carabiner has a nice wear point right in the middle where my rope has slowly worn through the anodizing. Um, if you look at a carabiner like this, that wear point is going to be on the inside corner. Now, carabiners are designed to be maximally strong when loaded in this direction. And this shape, this D shape, aligns the rope closer to the solid axis, which gives it more strength in that direction. And consequently, they can take more weight out of the carabiner and have it maintain the same strength rating. Now, these are slightly heavier, but what that allows them to do, and they can maintain the strength rating, uh, it allows them to be symmetrically loaded in a system like, like a hitch climber system. So my hitch climber system here sits right in the middle, and when I load it, it doesn't try to shift to one side or the other. It doesn't create a weird setup here. It just kind of loads symmetrically. A similar uh, carabiner to that is going to be these bigger pear-shaped carabiners. Now, it's also a little bit heavier even than the ovals, but the nice thing about the pear ones is they tend to orient themselves with gravity, right? Because it's heavier on one side, they'll tend to orient upside down like this, which can be useful. Um, in particular, this one's also got a really big top surface. So you can see it's quite a bit wider than this DMM oval carabiner. It's got a wider face. Now the point behind that is so you can use it for things like pulleys. Uh, this pulley sits on here really happily and it's not loading the pulley weird, it's not causing it to pinch. For example, like if I had a more D-shaped carabiner, see how it's going to load a little bit of an angle? That's going to put more an asymmetrical stress on this pulley which will cause premature failure. So that's something you want to be aware of. It's also great, this oval shape is also useful for hitch setups because once again it's going to orient itself um, or it's going to stay symmetrical as far as the loading. The part of the downside of this is that you've got a lot more aluminum. So this is a bigger round portion. So there's certain gizmos and gadgets like the notch rook attachment point that has these little rubber grommets inside and this carabiner won't fit through them. So if you know your system and you've already built it, sometimes it's worth checking what you're buying to make sure it fits through. Petzl in particular tends to be uh, sneaky about their carabiners, they're designing their gear for their carabiners to fit specifically. So here's another Petzl carabiner. Now this one looks like an oval, but it's not quite. It's actually a little bit D-shaped. So it has a little bit of the benefit of being lighter than the oval and the load aligning to one side, um, but it's almost symmetrical enough to where you could put a you actually can see where my wear point is, you can, you can mostly symmetrically load this. So this would be a safe one to climb with, with a INI Pressic or a, a hitch climber system. Now Petzl's got this great feature where it's, this is also a triple locking carabiner, but guys who are a little bit newer to climbing tend to have trouble with this three motions with one hand, and you want to be able to access these quickly and use them with one hand. This guy, however, because it's got this little, little catch, spring-loaded catch, and it's green, and you can feel it really easily with your thumb, it's quick and easy to grab and twist. Like it's very, it's almost as simple as a double locker, but it's a triple locker, which is nice. It's a little extra layer of redundancy. Um, and it's recessed, so it's a little bit less likely to be bumped and twisted. Although, in the case of this particular one, you gotta watch out a little bit because if, you, if your eye is loose, if it's not a really tight eye on the rope, it could actually work its way over the gate like this in a side-loaded configuration. And a little bit of tension on that is actually enough to release that. And you can get that out without using your hand. I don't know if you saw that, but. Something to be aware of, even with the triple locking carabiners is in the right, the right wrong orientation, 
you can still often, uh, this one's gonna fit at that once, but you can still often get your rope out if the eye isn't snug. Remember, I mean, if the eye is loose enough to slide over the gate, like this one here, it's not hard to move that and have it come off. Um, I've seen a demonstration where the guy did this in the tree pretty easily without having to actually activate a carabiner. So something to consider. I like tight eyes on my, on my climb system for that reason alone. All right, some of you guys who may be coming from rock climbing might have a bunch of these lying around because you use them in your climb systems. Uh, these are screw gate carabiners. They've been around the rock climbing world a long time. They're nice and secure when you screw them shut. <laughs> They don't, they're not qualified for ANSI certifications because you have to remember to screw it. It's not an auto locking, auto double locking. It's only auto single locking. Because if you forget to screw that shut, it can come out really easily. So much as it's a great carabiner, you might be able to use it for something that's not necessarily life support, or if you want to use it for something where you're, either it's not critical to have that screwed or you've got it screwed and then left, then that might be a good choice, but generally not for your climb system. As an alternative, one of my absolute favorite carabiners right now is this one made by Edelrid. It's a little bit pricey, a little more expensive than your standard carabiner, but it's very heavy duty. It's rated for 25 kilonewtons, which isn't particularly high, that's fairly standard, but it has a couple of really cool features that I just love. So it's triple locking, and it's got a very nice sort of natural feel to it. I don't know why, I just, I just like how it feels. But it also has this little eye capture. So that prevents my, uh, my climb system from rotating around accidentally. It's not perfect because it's spring loaded, so I can still kind of squeeze it through there. But generally when it's loose and moving around, it's gonna kind of stay put. And that keeps everything oriented properly. And then you've also got this awesome stainless steel insert so this is where carabiners tend to rub. Um, they wear out fast, especially if you're using it for something like a speed line or for your attachment to point to the bridge. Now I don't, I don't use a swivel on my bridge generally because I like how my climb system orients itself either left or right. So I can use my right hand for tending or my left hand for tending depending on how I attach it to my bridge. But this tends to be the wear point on my carabiners where it slides back and forth on the bridge. This stainless steel will outlast all the rest of this carabiner. You know, this gate is gonna be non-functional before this stainless steel is worn out. So that's kind of nice too. It's reassuring, you know, it's gonna have that maximum safety value for the whole life of the car, the whole functional life of the carabiner. So that's made by Edelrid. Uh, another carabiner I'd like to talk about here is the ANSI gate rated carabiner. Now this is a D shape, so it's a little bit stronger in this direction. I think this one's 27 kilonewtons, 27. So it's a couple thousand uh, newtons uh, stronger than some of these other ones. But it also has a rated gate strength, so 3,600 pounds. Now the nice thing about this carabiner in particular with the rated gate is that it's, you know you can be safe um, to some degree with side loading. So what I mean is if you're in a situation where this carabiner might receive some side loading, I mean, you're not really supposed to do this, but I do it a lot of times if I'm doing a crane tree where I come out of the crane and I wrap my climb line around the tree and I'll just choke it off to the tree. If I have this as my attachment point with my eye on it and I'm around the tree, right? That's a side loaded carabiner. Now this is not your optimal orientation for your carabiner, but with this one, you can be confident that it's gonna have more strength than a standard one. Now, once again, I'm not really recommending that. Um, but in a case like with a crane operation, I'm not going anywhere, I'm very stable. Uh, I know I, I'm, I'm not trying to do some big rigging where things are gonna get shocked and moved. I can feel fairly comfortable doing that with this particular carabiner, whereas I won't with some of these other ones. The other nice thing about it is these tight eyes don't like to work their way around this one. So I, it's fairly unusual that I find that I'm side loading it at all just because of how thick this is. Once again, this is a little more expensive, but it has those distinct safety advantages. Um, so that's another another useful carabiner here. But that would that would be why you might pay the extra for the for the rated gate. All right. So here we've got 
Another kind of cool DMM one, pear-shaped roughly. It's got a little bit of both the, the D, the asymmetrical loadings for a little bit of extra strength, but it's also got this big open top. The reason, another reason you might want one like this, even though this one is not a good one for mounting pulleys because, actually no, it's not bad for that pulley. That'll work for that pulley because it's symmetrical. It's gonna load evenly. But for something bigger, it, something bigger or wider, it may not be great. This one still is really nice to have around because you can use it for something like a munter hitch. Pretty frequently when I'm up in the tree, I will rig out some pieces using the tail end of my climb line. I'll bring it up, I'll tie on a little branch, I'll throw it over a union above me, I'll tie on a little branch, and then I'll put a munter hitch back to me or back to some other anchor point. And the cool thing about the munter hitch here, I'll show you guys, not to pretend like this is actually a long rope, uh, it's nice to have a, nice, a wide carabiner opening when you're running the munter hitch because it gives more room for the rope to move. It's smoother. It doesn't seem to like twist and bind up the rope as much. So it makes for a little more gradual application of friction. So I like having a big wide carabiner like this specifically for times when I'm using the munter hitch, um, which can be really handy. I use it often. Here we've got another, another cool carabiner by DMM. Similar idea uh, as, similar idea to sort of the oval. It's got this nice wide, symmetrically loaded, but it also has the added advantage of this gate. Now, in this particular DMM one, if you look, the gate opens up the opposite direction. So you get your uh, line in by pulling it down, and then it's actually locked in better. Whereas this one, I lift it, and then it, my um, whatever you put in there can still get itself out more easily. Let's see if I can demonstrate that more clearly than I just described it. So this guy also has this cool advantage. It's got this ridge right here, which prevents my your climb gear from sliding around as easily. So this one's kind of cool because it'll stay. If I put it on my harness, it'll tend to stay oriented like this and this won't slide around. So once again, that captive eye keeps things, keeps things safe, but, but you can get it out. Whereas this guy, it's harder to get it in, but it's easier to get it out. So that's probably the one, one design flaw of this particular device. It's still helpful, but it's not quite as effective as on this carabiner. Once again, these are a little bit more expensive, easy in, but it's so nice to not sit back and all of a sudden look at my climb system and notice that it's side loaded, which happens frequently with the more standard carabiners without this eye capture. Oh man, you didn't tell me I got an ant crawling on my face. Ugh, it stinks now. All right, so I've got a couple more little things to go over. Snaps. Snaps are cool. We've got two different types of snaps. These are made by ISC. Uh, this one by Notch, I think is basically just a rebranded ISC. This is a double locking snap. Now, you can actually use a double locking snap on your secondary positioning system. That's allowed uh, according to ANSI standards. It's a little bit risky because this is easy. This is really easy to open up. I mean, it's nice for that reason. It's super simple and straightforward. This is slightly more complicated. It's got a swivel, which I love. This is what I use on my lanyard, but it has a three-step process. So it's got one, two, three going on here. So it's a little bit harder to get, especially if you're at a weird angle and I'm trying to like connect it to my thing, but you get used to it and it's nice. And the swivel keeps the rope from getting twisted up. I love this snap. They have a known flaw, some of them, have had issues binding, uh, binding, uh, uh, sticking open basically. So you wanna make sure if you've got one that it's not doing that. Um, once again, a little bit of maintenance, keeping things lubed, making sure nothing's bent can prevent that. Those are really great for lanyards, uh, but they have this asymmetrical nature again. They're not great for climb systems. Um, and then of course this is closed off, so harder to mount. It's worth noting that unless a system is specifically says it's allowed for, you're not supposed to connect carabiner to carabiner. So if you've got one that's permanently mounted on, you're not supposed to 
uh, double up. Um, don't know really when you would want to do that, but it's worth noting that you're not supposed to. So in addition to climb systems, we use carabiners for a lot of other things. Um, I like steel carabiners anytime we're pulling with a machine. I've even broken these. So this one's got a working load limit of 50 kilonewtons, which is twice what most of the aluminum ones are. And I've still broken these with, um, with a lot of our basic bull ropes, even a 5 bull rope. You can break these things pretty easily, but they're sturdier. They're not really much more expensive. It's good to have a few around, even if you don't climb with them because they're heavy. And then uh, with Rock Exotica makes this cool little carabiner. It's kind of a pricey for a little guy, but it's actually uh, rated at five kilonewtons, which is nice to know. I use these for a couple of things. I keep one on my harness for attending my climb system in a single rope system. And then I also keep an extra one sometimes to attach a, a throw weight on the end of my line when I'm advancing it, or well, I'll attach my uh, work positioning lanyard with this to my harness sometimes when I'm negative rigging a spar. So I've had some friends, I know people who've gotten injured in a case where the spar started to peel away and separate uh, kind of like a barber chair. And what can happen is if I've got my lanyard around the spar, I can get squished into it pretty aggressively. And it's not very often, but occasionally that's the scenario. And in, if I can anticipate that sort of scenario happening, I will attach this little guy with five kilonewtons, which is plenty to hold me in place, and, but it becomes the weak link in the system. So I can have a, essentially a breakaway attachment point uh, on my lanyard, and that adds some safety factor if things go wrong to where I'm not gonna be crushed by the piece that catches me. So it's worth keeping one or two of these little guys around. Another thing we use snaps for is speed lining. For those of you who don't speed line, then you're probably not in the Pacific Northwest with all our big tall conifers in tight areas. But if you do, you've probably got a set of something like this where you've got your, uh, your, your strap here and then a snap. These are fantastic for that. I will probably eventually though, switch over to these Edelrid ones with the steel insert because these are gonna wear out so much slower. All of these snaps get worn out in here pretty quickly, uh, speed lining because of the way it runs along the rope. It builds up a little bit of heat, and if I've got an old rope especially, it tends to wear them out faster. But another use for these sorts of carabiners, even if it's not in your climb system. Same with these. If you've got a bunch of these around, you've been climbing with them, you realize it's not safe. These make for great attachment points for these guys. You just have to be careful because they don't hold a whole lot of load, and if you're speed lining, sometimes you're, you're shock loading it, and you can break these more readily. One other cool little addition here, Edelred actually sent me this. This is, this is new for them. This is a beautiful little double locking carabiner. Um, it's gonna be great for this sort of system like we were talking about. I'm probably gonna use it for redirects. It's not gonna be great for a primary attachment point, despite how cool and lightweight and double locking it is. Because of this same flaw I was showing you with some of these other carabiners, where if I've got an eye and it slips over the gate, this one's especially susceptible. If I slide that down, it catches the lock and releases it just like that. So it should actually, yeah, so there it goes. Just gonna pull, just gonna get that thing open. And now it actually even locks it open. And, and that's, a, that's gonna be a hazard. So it's probably not one I would use to my climb system per se, but the fact that it is double locking and it's super easy to get to deal with um, that'll be, I'll find some use for it, but it's new, D-shaped, nice and strong, really lightweight. It's, it's every bit as lightweight as this camp one. In fact, I think it's lighter than this camp one, but it's still a double locking carabiner. Pretty sweet, Edelrid. I like it. I like it. So there you go. There's the primer on carabiners. It's a little bit of a long video. Hopefully you found some of that information useful if it was new great. I'd love to have your feedback if there's something I've missed. If there's a carabiner that you love, let me know. I'd love to check it out. I've got a pretty good selection here, but I know there's quite a few more. Um, these are pretty main brand. They're long, well-established in the climbing world, but um, there's still some decent ones on Amazon and some of these other places that are a little more lesser known, but they're inexpensive and they're rated and they're tested and a lot of them are, are just as good. So don't feel like you need to spend the big bucks uh, to get the name brand ones, but they are awesome. If you do, 
Uh, when it comes to me, I don't like to skimp for it to save a couple of bucks when it comes to life-saving equipment. I'll just buy what I think is gonna be best and use it till it dies and get, get some new stuff. So there, actually, actually a lot of times I'll retire it before it dies generally, and then I don't die with it. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining me. Catch you next time at Strider Tree Gear.